these defendants took the soccer enterprise and turned it into a criminal enterprise. That's the Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, and she's talking about FIFA, the International Soccer Organization. Now, the Justice Department indicted 14 people on charges including racketeering, fraud, money laundering, and bribery. They're accused of taking 150 million bucks in kickbacks. At least Albany take a lesson from this. If you're going to do the kickbacks, at least get into the nine-figure uh, area like these guys do. And in exchange for those kickbacks, the allegations is and media deals, they all got, oh, this all was in connection with awarding the 2022 games to Qatar. Remember this? The winner is Qatar. <laughs> Swiss authorities arrested a bunch of FIFA officials outside their annual meeting at where else but a five-star hotel overlooking the Alps today. They are working with the U.S., also known as the Alps, and uh, they're planning to extradite those guys to the states. All right, Mark, I'll start with you. Explain venue to me. Why are they coming to Brooklyn? Well, <laughs> it, it, it's not so much, first of all, the indictment is, is deemed sufficient on its face, so that if they allege that activities in furtherance of the racketeering conspiracy occurred in Brooklyn and Long Island, the Eastern District of New York, that's enough to sustain venue on its face. The question is not so much venue, it's a question of whether this charge is properly brought in a United States court at all. Now, the umbrella of this indictment, and it's a 164-page indictment that I'm skimming through as we speak, it's a massive RICO or racketeering conspiracy charge. The law in our circuit is a jumbled mess as to whether the racketeering statute applies to foreign activity. And the current law here in our circuit in New York is that it's judged crime by crime. In other words, each of the underlying crimes charged as racketeering predicates has to have a connection to the United States. So the underlying crimes here are bribery, wire fraud, money laundering, et cetera. And the money laundering is e easy because they're using U.S. banks. The rest of it, they're going to have to prove that each of these bribes had an adequate connection to the United States to be prosecuted in American courts. On a macro level, war crimes are tried at The Hague, okay? So why isn't there an equivalent, or is there an equivalent, of an international court that would eliminate jurisdiction questions, et cetera, and say this was an international enterprise that put out for applications, right, from uh, countries on six different continents who wanted to host the games here, does it muddy the waters by bringing it to Brooklyn? Wouldn't there have been a better place to bring this so that you don't have to sort of rustle through how the U.S. was directly impacted and RICO, et cetera? Well, I, I think Mayo and I have spoken about the international court on the air before. The allegations are in this indictment, and I'm not saying remotely that I believe them, are these, these defendants have such vast sums of money and power, and they haven't been prosecuted in any other tribunal over the last 25 years when this racketeering conspiracy is alleged uh, to have existed. So naturally, the prosecutors in this country with their sometimes justified hubris, they think our system is the system that's going to do it. They think American commercial interests have been injured here, and they think an American court is the place to vindicate those interests. Now, ironically, the victims named in this indictment are, is FIFA and its constituent entities itself. In other words, the claim is that the defendants corrupted FIFA, deprived FIFA of their right to extra money and their honest and faithful services. So it's not uh, American taxpayers or the public at large who are claimed to, ha to be injured in this indictment, contrary to what they said in the press conference. Yeah. Read the document. It's an injury that's inflicted upon FIFA. It corrupted okay, the organization. Fair enough, and I want to get to remedy in a second, yeah. but Mayo... Is this the right place? Are we the right, is this the right court where this should be tried and to extradite these guys from, um, I forgot where they were in Switzerland, but I know they had a good view. Zurich. And thank you to bring them back stateside. I think that, first of all, the United States is not a signatory to the International Criminal Court, which we should be. And uh, that makes it difficult for us to take action there. And then there'd have to be questions jurisdictionally whether this is something that could actually be heard there. But presuming that it could be, I think that would be the place to do it. Well, they'd and have to have a tribunal that hears, a, 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 in essence, a commercial international absolutely. criminal justice court. Those and are for war crimes, like and you if said. The, and that jurisdiction uh, would probably be the best place to do it. But I think that really the key here, uh, to Mark's point, is that the international community didn't bring any actions in the past 
but significantly neither did the United States. So it's not as if we were chomping at the bit to do this. We could have presumably had some of those contacts which would have allowed them to be charged well before it reached these epic numbers. Instead, we waited until we finished number two, and now we possibly yeah. may benefit well, by being a host nation. Well, here we are, Doug, and if, if folks remember, even if they're not huge soccer fans, when they did the awarding, it's like the Olympics. Um, they whittle it down to the final three, and you have what we call in TV a triple box, and three countries were there, and then the guy opens the envelope, right? The U.S. came in second in that. If it's in the Olympics, some guy wins a gold medal, it turns out later he was caught that he was doping or whatever, the silver medalist gets awarded the gold and, he, and the, the cheater stripped of his medal. In this particular case, can I argue that the remedy and the right recourse is if we finish second, right, that, and Cutter was involved, um, if the allegations are proven too with payoffs and something else, that we should be awarded the games? I mean, I guess you could argue anything. I think it's probably more of a question of how much has already been done, how much has been already set up in that country. Would it, could you actually turn around and go to a different place at this point? But yeah, I mean, definitely. It's the, they got that as a product of bribery and crime. But you know, I want another thing before we're talking about where these should be. You know, I think they're looking at the banks now also for um, facilitating, facilitating this. Right, yeah. yeah. And, you know, you talk about a culture of maybe criminality at FIFA, but now we have it in drug laundering with the banks. Now we have them uh, facilitating this type of bribery and m money laundering. So really, this may be in the right place. If we're looking at U.S. banks that are facilitating this type of activity, then it is this For the money laundering allegations, but this is a vastly more sweeping uh, racketeering enterprise. I mean, these are the kind of indictments that you saw in the infancy of organized crime prosecutions. I, I'm just skimming through this now and I'm not speaking definitively about it. It doesn't seem to me that the allegation about the 2022 World Cup is actually a, a substantive count in here. It's just alleged in here as background. So the, the Apparently, year and a half mark as I understand it, they've been investigating oh, for, this. I, One I of the guys they got the fact. flip and wear a wire yes, here. Yes, I can tell you for a fact so. they've been investigating this for many, many, many years, not dating back to soccer's ascendancy here, but for quite a long time, uh, people have and been just from and a practical question, as a casual fan out there, people were asking questions from the very beginning. Cutter, forget about all the security. What about issues. having it in and Russia? I mean, mean come okay, on. and forget about how far it would be to get large populations to go travel there. When the games are going on, it's 140 <laughs> degrees. I don't know about in the shade, but 140 mm. degrees here. The, the legitimate question is asked practically from the very beginning about Cutter, really? Now, obviously, uh, some of those question marks are getting filled in. All right, now I want you at home to weigh in on our conversation. Head over to Facebook and Twitter as well and sound off on a question tonight. Should the United States get reparations? I know a lot of folks are saying we didn't want the games in the first place, but should we get the games in 2022, if I can ever get that name out, right, or number out for the World Cup uh, because of how this all went down if the allegations proven true? Let us know what you have to say. All right, when we come back, this is a question I've been dying to ask this table here. Free range, we've debated this. I'm not talking about chicken. I'm talking about free range parents getting in trouble with the law for letting six and 10 year olds walk home alone from the park. Now, Kentucky, um, you got 10 kids taken away because their parents decided to go off the grid. Didn't want to have any heat or running water here. We're gonna take a look at the rights of parents. Forget about how you or I would want to raise our kids, but the rights of parents and explore how much authority they actually have and should have when it comes to raising their own children. Stay with us.